10 All Sports Central will be going over next final prediction of this offseason, and it will be over the Baylor Bears, in which this was a team that was 11 and 3 last season. One of, I would say, two or three big surprise teams in all of the FBS last season. And yeah, Baylor, of course, they surprised a lot of people. Many expected them to hardly even make it to a bowl game last season, let alone Charlie Brewer had his big breakout season, and Baylor in general just had a huge breakout season. And today we're going to be going over whether or not they can improve on that in 2020 today. We're also going to be going over your returning production along with a full preview and prediction on every game on Baylor's schedule heading into the 2020 season. So with that, let's look at your season trends from 2019 for Baylor. Of course, they were undefeated all the way till they got to November. They were 8-0 between September and October. So uh, this is a team that started out very hot last season and they kind of stumbled a little bit at the end of the season. Of course, they were 3-3 between November and the postseason. Uh, but still, all around, just a great season for Baylor. It's been quite a while uh, since they've made it to 11 wins. So, I mean, once again, just a great season all around. We have some of your key wins from last season. They beat Iowa State on September 28th, 23-21. to And, of course, Iowa State last season was not all that relevant in the Big 12, but they still were a pretty good team with Brock Birdie and, of course, their head coach, Matt Campbell. I think they're going to be a good team in 2020 as well. I think they're a team that has a lot of potential and upside to uh, make a big run for the Big 12 next season. But... Yeah, they also had a big win at Kansas State, and of course, Kansas State was a team that was ranked for a good part of last season. They won that 131-12, big win there. They also had a big win at Oklahoma State, 45-27, before or yeah, before beating Texas, of course, 24-10, which would also be another big win. So, another thing you got to mention, of course, too, for Baylor last season, they had three losses, and two of their losses were to Oklahoma. Of course, Oklahoma was the only team that really was giving Baylor trouble last season. I mean, if Oklahoma wasn't around. No doubt in my mind that Baylor would be right around towards the top of the college football playoff. Um, of course, I mean, it didn't really happen because of Oklahoma, but it's just kind of something to think about. But I'm also looking at your returning production for next season. Of course, Matt Rule, their head coach, is no longer at Baylor. He's moved on to the NFL now. And they're doing their starting quarterback, Charlie Brewer, which is going to be huge for this team. Of course, he was a great quarterback last season, putting up over 3,100 yards with 21 touchdowns and seven interceptions. He also had a 64% completion rate, so all around, I'd consider him to be one of probably three of the best quarterbacks in the Big 12 last season, and he definitely has potential to be a top two, maybe even the best quarterback in the Big 12 next season. I mean, looking at his stats, once again, he's very accurate, and I mean, he still has a lot of room to improve, in my opinion, as well. He still is very young, so yeah, watch out for Charlie Brewer, especially going into 2020 for this team. They do lose their top running back, Jermichael Hasty, which, of course, he was a big part of this team, too, uh, with over 800 yards and seven touchdowns. And they do return their second running back in John Levitt, uh, which that's going to be a big return. He had 720 yards with five touchdowns last season. And, I mean, of course, for, this is a big rushing team last season. You also have Tristan Ebner, of course. He was also another big part of this team last season with 560 yards. Uh, but, yeah, as far as your top two running backs go, it's, it's going to be huge to have John Levitt back. And even though you are losing haste to your top running back, uh, at least you're going to have one that was not far behind him taking over at the running back core. As far as the receiving core goes, you lose your top one in Denzel Mims, which he certainly was one of the best wide receivers in pretty much all of the Big 12 last season. I'd consider him to be a top three wide receiver in the Big 12. He had over 1,000 yards with 12 touchdowns last season. They do return their second and third wide receivers with Tyquan Thornton and R.J. Sneed which both of those receivers were both really good as well. Um, of course, looking at uh, Tyquan Thornton, of course, he had 780 yards with five touchdowns last season, while RJ Sneed had 430 yards with an additional three touchdowns. So the receiving core looks pretty good. Same with the running back core. I mean, as long as you can uh, fill in the shoes of Jermichael Hasty, I think they're going to be just fine there. And, I mean, as far as the receiving core goes, you do lose Denzel Mims once again, but you do have two pretty good receivers right behind him. As far as the offensive line goes, you're only losing one on there, so that's going to be really good for Charlie Brewer. And honestly, this offense really sets up well for Charlie Brewer to have a big season. Uh, so you watch out for that. But as far as the defense goes, you do take a couple of big hits there, losing two of your defensive linemen. You lose two linebackers and three in the secondary. So this defense does concern me a little bit heading into next season. I do think the defense may take a little bit of a decline. But again, then again, I mean, in the Big 12 Conference, the one stat that really makes all the difference is the offense. I mean, the offenses are always really good in the Big 12. And so, I mean, the defense would be very helpful for Baylor and for any Big 12 team in general. Uh, but yeah, for Baylor next season, this offense is going to need to play very well uh, for this team to be able to make it really anywhere past a Big 12 championship. And I mean, once again, as the defense goes, I mean, the defense is, I mean, they were okay last season, nothing special, but they certainly do have 
a lot of room to improve and they're going to be a bit younger next season that does that does concern me a little bit but then again i mean baylor still has a lot of potential i think heading into 2020 chances of winning the big 12 in 2020 of course i mean the big 12 in my opinion is wide open i mean if you take oklahoma out of the picture there are like five other teams that i could i mean i could honestly like consider winning the big 12 next season and you could name off several like oklahoma state they're going to be one that's going to be good next season same with texas uh, Baylor's up there. Iowa State is as well. Um, and then, of course, you got Oklahoma right at the top. And I think there's going to be a bit of a gap between Oklahoma and the rest of the Big 12 next season. And, of course, that's how it's been for the past few years. Uh, last season, Baylor was right up next to Oklahoma. But, I um, mean, either, either way, I mean, Oklahoma beat up Baylor twice. So, I mean, with that, it's kind of tough to say whether or not any team is going to be able to win the Big 12 other than Oklahoma next season. Uh, but I definitely think Baylor's going to be up there in the mix for it. I don't think... That I'm not confident that they will win it next season, but once again, I do think that there's a chance that they could contend in the Big 12 next season. Once again, I mean, getting up to that championship game will be tougher next season, considering they do not have their head coach and Matt Rule, who did a great job last season, and also your top running back and wide receiver. It's just a tough say right now, uh, but I think Biller definitely will have a shot at being right towards the top of uh, the standings in the Big 12. As far as your schedule, looks he struck the season in a neutral location against Ole Miss. He got an SEC opponent right off the bat. Then you get your first conference game against Kansas on the 12th. So, I mean, those first couple games should be pretty easy, but you do have two Power 5 games to start off your season. Yeah, Incarnate Word on the 19th, followed by Louisiana Tech on the 26th. And then you got a really big road trip to Oklahoma. That's going to be a very important game there on October 3rd. Then you have a bye week, and then you play Texas Tech the following week on the road. Then you got TCU and Texas to finish out your October. As far as your November goes, you got Oklahoma State followed by Iowa State, West Virginia, and Kansas State. So it looks like that November could be one of your tougher months. I mean, the October is looking pretty tough as well with having three road games against Oklahoma, Texas Tech, and Texas. And of course, TCU next season should be improved. So in the end, I think for Baylor next season, the, the schedule kind of sets up for them to have a decent record, but I'm not expecting... Um, any cholesterol playoff appearances based off of this schedule. I mean, when you got to play all of your tough opponents on the road, for the most part, including Oklahoma, Texas, and Iowa State, it does concern me a little bit. As far as your September goes, though, I think you go 4 0. You absolutely blow past your September, I think. So I think Baylor's going to be ranked up pretty high uh, for that Oklahoma game. I think that Ole Miss game could be, well, that's going to be the toughest one out of all four, in my opinion. And then Kansas should be an easy one. Same with Incarnate Word and uh, Louisiana Tech. Both of those games should be pretty much low-past ones. So, yeah, for Baylor, as far as the September goes, I'd give you a 4-0 record. As far as your October goes, that's going to be a tougher month, I think. I think you can take a loss against Oklahoma. And I'll say I went back and forth on that one. I could have given Baylor the win on there easily, but I think Oklahoma, I mean, it, I mean, Baylor's got a much easier stretch going into that game, but for Oklahoma being at home, and they've always got a really good home field advantage. So I think for Oklahoma, that's going to help them a ton. Uh, going into that game and of course for Baylor once again though um, I mean Baylor's definitely got the potential to win that game and I think they keep it close but just once again that road having to play on the road at Oklahoma I think does kind of give Baylor a bit of a downside in that game so I think they take a loss there and that will be their first loss of the season I think you can get two close wins against Texas Tech and TCU so I think you bounce back the next week on the road well actually you've got a bye week in between Oklahoma and Texas Tech uh, so that is going to be really good but yeah, I think you get a close win at Texas Tech, and then I think you get a close win against TCU as well. Uh, so yeah, you're starting off your season 6-1, and one, not all that bad. Uh, but going into that Texas game, I think Texas next season is another team. I mean, with Sam Ellinger in there, and um, of course with them being at home in general, it's pretty tough to play there. So I think for Texas, I'd probably favor them in that one. I think Texas gets the win um, on October 31st. So you yeah, go into your November 6-2, and two, you've already clinched bowl eligibility. And the only thing that you're really running for at this point would be a Big 12 championship. And considering you've got a pretty tough November, I think you go 2-2 two and two through this month. I think you kind of go on a losing streak in there between October and November. I think you lose to Oklahoma State and Iowa State as well. I mean, Oklahoma State next season is a team with a great quarterback. Um, and they've got a great offense in general. And I think Oklahoma State in general, I mean, they could have easily been well or much better this season. But it didn't really turn out that way. I'm kind of expecting that for next season. I think Oklahoma State is a team to watch out for, and I think Baylor takes a loss there. That's going to be their only home loss, though, next season. And then I think you take a loss against Iowa State on the road in uh, in Ames. And, of course, Iowa State next season uh, with Brock Purdy at quarterback, he's probably going to be a top three quarterback in the Big 12 next season. Uh, so Iowa State's looking pretty good heading into next season as well. So 
I mean, Iowa State's even going to be a tough team. I could, like, any of those four teams that you're going to lose to with Oklahoma, Texas, Oklahoma State, and Iowa State, I could see all four of those teams in the Big 12 championship next season. Like, all four of those teams should be in contention for it. Like, especially, I'd say Oklahoma should be way up there. But, I mean, Texas, Oklahoma State, and Iowa State, all three of those teams definitely have the potential uh, to go pretty far next season. So watch out for them. But I do think you get two wins to finish off your season, though, against West Virginia and Kansas State. Uh, your regular season at least I think you get a close win against both of those teams which of course West Virginia next season I still don't really expect a whole lot out of I think they're going to improve but I just don't think they're going to prove a ton uh, but I think you get a win against Kansas State at home in the end so yeah your record prediction for next season is eight and four and it wouldn't surprise me a single bit to see Baylor uh, get up to nine wins next season and I mean just the thing is though there's a lot of question marks on this team going into next season so this is a t pretty tough team to predict. Of course, when you got Charlie Brewer, who is a great quarterback, probably going to be one of the best in the Big 12, could be in the nation next season. Uh, but the big problem is for Baylor is that you're losing your top running back once again and your top receiver, let alone you also don't have Matt Rule in there anymore. So you got a new head coach coming in, and it's going to be, I think it's going to be kind of tough. It's going to be a tough adjustment for Baylor heading into next season. I mean, the good thing is they're not getting a new quarterback. I mean, Charlie Brewer returning is going to be huge for this team, I think, going into next season. I mean, if they weren't returning Charlie Brewer, I could expect a big um, a big decline going into this season. But the good thing is for Baylor, they do have him back. And in general, I think Baylor is a team that should be able to be in contention for the Big 12. I'm just not sure whether or not they'll be able to go into the Big 12 championship, but I just think they'll be able to contend for it. Yeah, with that, once again, your record prediction for Baylor next season is 8-4. and four. If you enjoyed this preview, be sure to slap a like on it and subscribe as well. It really helps out the channel. I'd really appreciate that. But as always, be sure to stay tuned for more content from All Sports Central. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Once again, on Baylor, and I will see you all later.